All right, guys. Here's the video uh, on the investigation of the uh, buried answers. Um, if you haven't yet subscribed, so you don't miss any upcoming videos that's going to be coming out on this area. We're going to camp the area. We're going to investigate the area. We're going to actually cross over into this area. So reach down, hit the uh, subscribe, hit the like button uh, right now if you haven't because that helps get my video out. It uh, helps other people to see it by the algorithm of YouTube, so please hit the like button. And uh, don't forget to click the bell so you all get notifications of my new videos coming out. I want to start with a little bit of the history. Uh, this bridge was always, as I was growing up, been younger. Uh, we're going to call it bridge number one, that way you all don't get uh, confused. It is... Uh, not the back bridge we're going to be uh, talking about. It's going to be the expensive bridge it was put in. It will be bridge number one. It was always called Troll Bridge as I was growing up. A lot of the older guys would always tell us, you know, that don't be down there after dark because they hear, you know, growls and, you know, whoops and whistles and all that. And uh, it was just always called Troll Bridge. So uh, it was nothing, you know, uncommon it was just we grew up with it being called that and we was you know never there after dark that much. but uh kind of what's unique about this area is before they had flooded in the lake my grandma and grandpa had actually lived there my grandma uh, being the older at the time my great grandma and then my grandpa being you know a youngster at the time living they lived actually beside this creek She had only told like one story about one time something had came up and it was growling and scratching on her house and it was making a lot of weird noises and uh, hung around the house for you know three or four days uh, really weird she actually got weirded out by it and she was not one to really to believe you know in a bigfoot she'd be the type to tell you oh it's something else but she I remember she told my dad one time she said she looked out the window and what she had seen was walking on two legs and she said I know there's no bears down here so kind of interesting to the area that all this is happening in uh, anyways that's kind of a backstory on it uh, I was fishing off this bridge when all this first started with uh, my sister and her husband and the kids and we were approached by firemen uh, it first started out, how are the fish biting, you know, are y'all catching anything, you know, yeah, we done pretty good the other night, you know, just exchanging information on where the fish are biting. And he told us, he said, have y'all heard about what they found back at the Bat Bridge? Of course we hadn't, we said, no, you know, what what they find back there? And we knew that, you know, they'd have it closed for almost a year. He said, yeah, they uh, found what they thought to be human remains. But uh, when we went back down in there to help them with some things, some of those bones they had didn't look human. They looked, in fact, twice the size of humans. The skulls were very large. I said, that is really crazy. I said, well, so what'd they do with it? He said, well, they brought in heavy, heavy equipment, and they brought in rebar, and they brought in a big mold, and they made a huge concrete, I guess, what, what you would call it would be like a uh, just a concrete block out there. He said they put all the bones in it. They took this heavy equipment on the other side of the bridge number two, the back bridge. He said they dug a huge deep hole. He said they lowered it down into the hole, covered it with dirt, put riffraff rock on it, huge rock, covered more dirt on top of it, and then leveled it off with gravel. I thought, man, that was really strange, you know. But we didn't never, you know, we didn't think no more about it. And then later on, uh, we was approached by another gentleman. He's a Alloway uh, lifetime resident. And he walked up and he said, hey, y'all hear what happened to that back bridge? And, you know, we were sitting there and was like, well, yeah, we've heard a little bit. And uh, he said, well, 
I snuck over there. His uh, property that he has uh, access to kind of connects to this property, so he was able to go in the back way. This guy's hunted, fished, ran coons all night long. You know, he he knows his way around. Anyways, he got in there and he said he looked down into he said a huge hole. He said it was like a coal mine hole. He said it wasn't real big. He said it was probably about 50 yards or 30 yards. But he said it was just... He said, well, it, it was nighttime. He said it was like looking off into the abyss. He said it was just very deep. But he said they had bones laying on the side that were stacked. And he said some of the bones were skulls that were twice the size of our skulls. But what was unique to him, only besides the size of the skulls, some like he, what he describes as arm bones, leg bones, stuff like that, he said were a lot larger. And he also said that some of the skulls had what appeared to be uh, canines. So, I was like, did you get any pictures? He's like, no, we didn't get any pictures. Uh, he was actually caught by the security down there in camouflage, as you're going to hear some other people were was escorted out and warned he'd be arrested if caught back on the property. So that was the witness number two that we spoke to. Excuse me, I have notes, guys, to make sure I keep you all on the right track. Uh, another thing, I ran into a man and a woman the other day while investigating the area, and uh, they, they were fishing. And I got to talking to them and visiting about fish and so forth. And I asked them if they knew anything about what had happened down there. And she told me, yeah. And I asked her if she'd go on camera. They would, of course, they wouldn't go on camera. But she said I, will, I could use their first and last names. So thank you, Beth. And thank you, Hugh. I know you'll be watching. You asked for the channel. And thank you for the information you gave me that day. But uh, anyways, she said they were fishing down there. And... Uh, while they were fishing, she said uh, there was like a army bridge, she said, across beside the old bridge, but it looked like it was a, uh, like a hover uh, boat or something, but she said anyways, you could tell it was a big heavy duty bridge because she said they had moved their heavy equipment onto the other side of the bridge and were digging this massive hole while she was fishing. She said they were digging and digging and digging and digging and digging. Well, she said they didn't, you know, never tell her to leave that day or anything. So they continued to dig. And uh, she said, you know, they finished up and got their limit. Uh, I think it was crappie, she said. So the next day, they came back. And they were met at the road where I was met and told I couldn't go in, she said, by a gentleman in camouflage. She actually said a... Uh, a Chinese gentleman in camouflage and told her that he was security they could not enter the property because it was for their safety that they were doing some digging and cleaning up back in the area and that they were going to be having to use dynamite to be able to clear some things she said she never thought anything about it because they knew they were doing work and they left so that was pretty much all the information that she had gave me the only thing I could picture that they would be using would be a military portable bridge. It'd be something like this one here in this picture. And if they brought one of them down there, I guess it would be a lot cheaper than it would be to replace maybe the old bridge back there. But uh, they definitely were in a hurry maybe to get heavy equipment onto the other side to cover something up I you know it's speculation but we know there was work done there and you will see that here in a minute so you know that was really interesting to me uh, another thing about this area as far as being active uh, Sarah she was fishing at this bridge and she was able to catch video of something moving through the trees after they had heard hoop whistles and growls she grabbed her camera didn't think to turn it sideways she held her camera up as anybody wish she was panicked and she got a little bit of it on video 
Uh, if y'all would like to see the video, I will put the link to that video in the description of this video. The name of it is Walking in the Trees. If y'all want to go on my channel and check it out. But this is also in the same area all this is going on. So it's kind of unique to this to this video. I, I would suggest watching it so you can see that there's a lot of activity, activity in this area. But uh, anyways, after everybody told me all this and I started investigating, I contacted... Uh, two historical museums one of the uh, the first historical museum I spoke to I spoke to a lady and uh, she uh, was close to the area and she said that if there were remains found in that area and they were human remains as far as the law would go they would have to be relocated a uh, medical examiner would come in you know detectives all that they would make sure if there was no foul play no murder contact the family and then the bones would be relocated because this is a floodplain on core land this is government Corps of engineers runs it so this army i guess down in there uh she also said that if it was a old indian burial ground that they by law would have to contact the tribes uh they would then uh, by law have to contact an archaeological society that would come out they would dig it they would take the artifacts out everything would be documented everything would be done and then the tribes would be contacted and then the bodies would be relocated wherever the tribes would want them and then the the tribes have ceremonial uh berries you know burials for their you know for their families and uh because this is a heavily flood plain they're going to be destroyed there they're going to be washed out and nobody you know would want that to happen uh i then called another historical society to make sure that you know all this what the first one had told me I like to double check and they they concurred that yes it is law and it, you know the first one was right so then I called another one closer and I spoke with a person and I want to make sure I get this right uh, she had went to college she was, let me see where I can find it. She is a archaeologist and an anthropologist. And she told me a story that I thought was very unique uh, to what's happening here. Um, she knew a lady that I knew, which is the small town area. And she said one night she had went over to her house and she was visiting, which was nothing uncommon around here. Everybody sits on the porches and visits. And she said that she was looking out toward the back of the house, sitting on, you know, the back porch of this lady's house she was visiting. She and her husband have now passed. That she was visiting. I knew them. They were very, very good people. And she saw two lights out in the, uh, out in the woods. Well, these woods are really close to what uh, would be the Delaware payment grounds and would also be close to the bridge in question right now where all the activities at. So she, this house is right in the middle of all this, still there today, way out in the middle of nowhere. But anyway, she said they looked out there and uh, while they were talking, she saw the two lights and she had thought maybe that, you know, the lady she was visiting's husband, which was avid in the woods, he'd maybe put something out there, a bird feeder or something reflecting. Later they uh, was talking and she had noticed it moved. She said the two lights were gone, and she said, I asked my friend, I, you know, I'll go ahead and use her name now. Her name was Audrey. You know, she said, where did they go? And she said, where'd what go? And she said, well, them two lights you had out there on that tree. And she said, well, I didn't have no lights out there on that tree. And she said, there ain't nothing out there. And she said, well, I've been sitting here the whole time we've been visiting, and I saw those two lights out there. And she said, no, there ain't no lights out there. And she said, there's no yard light on. They didn't have no yard light out there or anything. So she said, I thought, well, maybe it's lightning bugs or something. She blew it off for a while. She said they were sitting there visiting. And all of a sudden, she said, we both looked up and we seen it. She said it was walking right down the tree line. She said it was not what she expected to see as far as what people had said. She said it was tall. It was lanky. Medium build. She said nothing huge. But what really caught her, she said, is when it turned and looked back toward the porch at him, she said it had a snout. She said not a long snout like a dog, but a shorter snout like a pit bull or like a bulldog, you know, a shorter, rounder, she said stronger looking snout. 
and she said it had yellow glowing eyes and she said it just walked off into the woods she said I know it wasn't afraid of us so uh, the whole time those two lights that she saw out in the woods was I'm guessing it was standing there watching them. but uh, you know she was really interested in this because she lives close of course she's in you know archaeology and everything and she told me she said I am not surprised she said because she's heard rumors of this being done elsewhere and other places that's how they hide it um, so I mean if she was interested and she's heard the same rumors because I mean if they're hiding stuff like that there's no way you're gonna be able to get it up uh, you know a lot of things also I found out there I thought was really weird is you know they widened the road uh, there was rest area made there was heavy equipment and everything and as you're driving to this on this dead end road you're gonna see that as you're coming up here is this old rough country road and the next thing you know you run into this nice two-lane bridge that was made from where a one-lane bridge was at and the uh, one-lane bridge which I'll show you here this is the old bridge it's the best picture I could get I didn't have an actual photograph so I got this from Google Earth but this is what the old bridge was single lane concrete side you know just normal back bridge that you'd see on a uh, dirt road in the country and then here's the new bridge that replaced it as you can see it was widened it's a large two-lane bridge, very expensive bridge. It was raised up above the creek. It has uh, very heavy-duty pillars underneath it. Uh, this bridge was made to withstand a lot more weight, which led me to believe that the reason such a nice bridge was put on a dead-end road is this was the only access part to get to that back area where they needed to do the work to where they wouldn't have to go through town or buy a bunch of houses. This is the back way. So it would be more of a more secluded area for travel. And the little bridge that was there before it would have never withstood the weight they would need to bring in there with the equipment that they had. I did witness the equipment, large equipment, semis. So I think this bridge was put in so that they could access that area to do whatever work they done back there, whatever they did. This bridge was put in for that reason. Because the other bridge, no way it would have accommodated what they needed to do. Um, you go back there, and it, it, it makes you wonder. So let me adjust this again. Sorry, it's about to fall. I'm trying to find something for y'all. Uh, as you go back there, you'll notice also that the work they done was on the other side of bridge number two, which is the back bridge. It was all done on the other side. You could tell there was looks like a large hole was there. You can see there's brand new rock put over there. You can see uh, when you walk over there, there is tracks of heavy equipment, uh, tracks, tires. There's a lot of work done on the other side of this bridge. Here's kind of a photograph to show you. They put a barricade in front of this bridge. So you can't even pass this bridge in your vehicle. But on the other side of this bridge, where this bridge is impassable, they've done a lot of work and laid new gravel. This is where the hole is supposedly supposed to be. This is where they buried it all. This speculatory would be why they would put in a big bridge to get all that heavy equipment to the back because they needed to access that area to get rid of something is my theory um, there, this area back in here is swamp as you can see here it's just all swamp Uh, the road it runs it's just runs right into a dead end there's no reason to me to even to have done this I mean if your road is running to a dead end why put a million dollar bridge in when you can simply replace it you know with just a simple bridge uh, 
A lot of work was done on the other side of a closed bridge that goes nowhere. They even went as far as they poured a concrete barrier in front of this bridge and put road closed. You can't even drive across where they done all this work. Why do all this work? Why put a million dollar bridge on a dead end road? Why have all of your equipment sitting on this back bridge road and have that closed with armed security? With huge amounts of equipment back there, rebar, concrete, concrete trucks, semis, uh, front end loaders, diggers. Why do all this work on the other side of a bridge and lay brand new rock when you can't even get a car over there to park it? And you've got people that live around the town that are honest people that have lived there all their lives that have seen things that they know are not normal we're not human guys I think we're gonna have to camp this area I think we're gonna have to go down in there listen for vocals footprints we're going back there's a lot down here I think to be discovered and we will be going back so if you haven't subscribed subscribe hit the bell there will be a night visit to this area. We're going to go for vocals. We're going to see what we can find down there, guys. We will go back. Um, there was a little uh, small thing that happened to me on my way down there. I was driving. I saw something crossing down into the dead end where it's nothing but trees, brush, swamp, briars, thorn trees. I saw something black on the right side of the road. It went to the left side of the road. I grabbed my camera as fast as I could while driving. I know you don't do that, but uh, I took a picture as fast as I could because I could tell it was something big. It had moved to the left side of the road because I had been out of my vehicle taking pictures of the new bridge and everything, so I'm guessing it was probably watching me. Same area Sarah's video is done, same area all this is done, except for it's off in the woods. And I grabbed a couple of photographs, they're not the best, but you all can see there's something standing on the left side of the road down there watching me. I hope you all enjoyed this. Please give me a like. I look forward to all your comments. Uh, don't forget to ring the bell. Subscribe, guys. And there's going to be more videos coming. I appreciate you all watching. Be safe if you're out hunting. And I appreciate each and every one of you. God bless. So, guys, you're driving down this one-lane dirt road right here. Sorry about the sun, but as you can see, it's rough, it's ruddy, when it rains, uh, you can't hardly get down this without a four-wheel drive. There's no houses, there's no buildings, no jobs, no nothing, it's just dead ends, this road. As you can see right here, this road's in terrible shape, there's nothing down here. As we're driving down this rutted up road that goes nowhere except for if you could drive through trees and grass and briars and mud and everything else you could and your car floated you could drive across the lake and climb straight up a bluff it's about 80 foot tall so I mean this dead ends but as you can see as we come up here after all these ruts one lane road that's going nowhere. Get past these. We come up to what I'm calling bridge number one. And this is what started the whole thing of things. See the cruts. Is why would you come down here? And why would you put a bridge? It's nice because when you get here, watch the, watch the gravel changes. You got nice gravel now. It's getting all widened out. As you can see, I'll get you a better shot. I know this sounds terrible. Just bear with me. I just want you to see as you're coming up. Look how wide this bridge is. You have a two-lane bridge 
that is raised up that is headed down here toward a dead end. Okay? So I want to hop out real quick and show you all so you can get a better view because I know the sun's terrible. So let me hop out and I want to show you all something. Let me get out right here. As you can see, we have this huge, nice two-lane bridge. This is where the firemen had stopped and had told me that they had buried the bodies at the back bridge. He said that some of the skulls were larger than our than our school skulls. Sorry, some of them had canine teeth and were not thought to look human. The bones were bigger than ours. So that was kind of what started it. You can see they done a lot of work. They dug the ditches down. All this guys for a dead end. For a dead end road. You can see over here. They dug these ditches way down. And all the riffraff they brought in for just a little bitty creek. But uh, yeah look at this guys. For a dead end road. But you got to have equipment if you want to be able to get or you got to have a good bridge if you want to be able to get heavy equipment in. Right over here is where Sarah caught the movement on her video called Walking in the Trees. I'll put the description in the link. But she caught it right back in here while she was fishing. This goes absolutely nowhere, guys. That goes on and on and on to nowhere. But I want to take you all on back to this bridge where they had all this heavy equipment and done absolutely no work that I can tell except for the big hole that everybody says was dug. So let's take a venture back there. Alright guys, there's the end of the road, the dead end. Down here is where all the equipment was stored. This is also a dead end. They had all their equipment parked down here, I'll show you. The guard was back behind us at the beginning of the road. He wouldn't even let you down here. So we come down here and around this bend right here they put a rest area here where they had equipment parked and down here was all equipment down this road this is where they spent all of their time now I don't see any work that's been done down here yeah the road's been wide you know widened out just a little bit or some huge rocks that they brought in but uh, as you can tell there's been no work I mean this was full of machinery this was full of uh, sticks I mean they brought everything down in here guys it was just full of rebar but uh, all that work for this right here I want to show you all this this is what's weird show y'all if you get out and you look right here they poured a huge slab in front of the bridge and closed it right okay right over here is where Beth and Hugh said they had the bridge that went across now look here we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cross this we're going to walk it up over it. That's what I wanted to show y'all. See this bridge? They couldn't drive across it. Now this bridge here is identical to the one they just replaced up there. The one I just showed you. It was identical to this bridge. Except for the other one. It was in actually pretty good shape. But anyways. You can see this is an old just junky creek. Right? But you come over here. And this is where they say they had this huge hole, okay? You can see all the new rock they brought in. This was supposed to have been the huge hole. It expanded from there all the way over. The huge hole was here. 
and then up to me. As you can see, this is a dead end. There is no traveling across this bridge. Very deep wooded. It goes absolutely into nothing but swamp and just miles of nothing but this. You can see over here where the flood water's been up. But they brought all that heavy equipment in here, guys. All of it. For this old swampy bridge. This old swampy water. And they dug a huge hole over on the other side of a bridge you cannot access. Put nice rock in here, you can see. Really nice rock. Which is supposed to be a hole under here, guys. With a concrete slab full of the bones. With riffraff on top of it. Dirt. And then this rock. This is the area. And you can see. They were supposed to have had a land bridge across here. From what she had said. There is nothing here. Why do you do all this work? For a dead end. I mean you can't travel down through here guys. That's not, you, there's no way. It's dead end. But yet they done all this work. Brand new gravel. Big old hole. Concrete trucks. My buddy had counted seven concrete trucks that had came by his house. For this guys. For nothing. My theory on it. They had to put a new bridge in. To be able to get their equipment in here. To make this hole. And to bury whatever they wanted to bury. Because the other bridges were exactly like this one. They would not support the equipment they brought. They're not wide enough. They're single car. They had to make that one up there a two lane, you know. To do what they needed to do. Was there something hidden down here? I mean, something went on. Why? I don't know. Why do you do all the work on the other side of a bridge that you close? You cannot access. They've got signs up that says you cannot access it. For a dead end. I think we need to do a camp out here, guys. Find out what's going on. Because you can see, there's nothing here for all this work. Now I'm talking, they had numerous vehicles here. And you can see, real close to all the work that they done on the other side. All that work over there. And you can't even access it. What do you think, guys?